Good morning and welcome to Bayview Lutheran Church. One of our scripture readings for today is Psalm 23, and thus our liturgy is tied in to that passage. Let us pause for a moment and then enter into our call to worship. In the darkest valley, at the banquet table, in the hard works of life, at the moment of ease, in our day-to-day -day reality, at times set aside, like this time, now, for worship, for listening, for paying attention, with every step that we take, goodness and mercy follow us, our cups overflow. Let us pray. Loving Shepherd, you know our names. And you care for us when we face darkness and death walk beside us when we hunger for your love fill us with your presence when we are fearful feed us at your table may we dwell in the house of goodness and mercy all the days of our lives amen our confession is like a shepherd Lord, like a shepherd, you never stop searching for your people. You care for us, anticipate our needs, before we recognize we needed your grace and love. Jesus gave his life for our forgiveness. We confess that we need your forgiveness. We confess our sins. You are the shepherd, and we are your flock. But we admit at times we have tried to take your place and take control of ourselves. We admit that we do not always trust you. Your good news to us is too good for us. At times we have pleaded with you to care for us, but we have held back from caring for others and ignored the needs of others. Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us in the name of Jesus. Loving Shepherd, teach us by the Holy Spirit to follow you in the days and the places of the weeks ahead. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now hear these words of assurance. Merciful and loving God, we thank you for your never losing hope for us. When we are lost, you are there on the lookout for us. Bring us back to you like the good shepherd that you are. Your word tells us of the joy in heaven that awaits us. May this joy flow into our lives each day and be faithful, reacting to the world around us. Thanks be to God, our great shepherd. Our gathering song, good Christian friends, rejoice and sing verses 1 and 3. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, 
and we shall be whole. Make us one with you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John 10, 11 through 18. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired man who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired man runs away because a hired man does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we have the opportunity to hear two very familiar stories to most. We hear maybe the most famous scripture in the Bible to both churchgoers and non-churchgoers because of funerals in Psalm 23, and then we hear about Jesus being the shepherd. Many of us love hearing John 10 because it reminds us that we have a God who showers us with unending and unfailing love and care. I think each of us wants to be loved and comforted in knowing that we have a shepherd that walks with us is reassured. However, in the text, there is a curveball that is thrown. And that curveball is thrown to us in verse 16. You need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in this pen. I need to gather and bring them in too. They also recognize my voice. There will be one flock and one shepherd. When I hear this, I am reminded that it is not just about us. There are others out there that are connected to the kingdom of God, but at a deeper level. I think that it is a call for us to hear about the importance of diversity. The body of Christ is incomplete and there are many individuals who have yet not heard the message of love and grace and have not been connected with Christ. Thus, here is a 
question that I would love for you, me, and for us to wrestle with. Who is it that have taken their place in our beloved community? Then, what have you, us, done to create a welcoming place for them and have sent out that invitation to them? I know that it can be tough. I want to encourage you, though, to help us here at Bayview to be a place where oneness occurs. This can occur because we are called to oneness in Christ. And this oneness allows us to welcome diversity. The diversity can occur in many realms. In the U.S., we often separate ourselves among culture, race, classes, and once again, even political affiliation. Can we erase some of that division and be one with Christ? In my 27 years of parish ministry, I have found that many times we seem to love diversity when it is far away. We appreciate making an impact outside of our community. We will send people with money across borders, but to do that within our own community borders can be challenging at times. So let me be bold and please dream with me and let us find ways where and how that we can reach our immediate neighbors and bring them into the fold. Once again, I believe that the service team will bring us opportunities to connect and serve. I will encourage them and to you to be involved in our own backyard. I think that sometimes when churches place many arm length or distant projects on the table, that it allows us the security of loving our neighbor without seeing our neighbor. So can we be challenged to see our neighbor? Jesus laid down his life for the sheep and is the great shepherd. May we be a God and point them to this great shepherd. The divisiveness that is occurring is contrary to this divine call. So what does that mean for us? When Jesus speaks of one fold that belongs to him, the good shepherd, it means that we must love our neighbors in all of their diversity. As I write out this sermon and give it to you, I am laughing a little bit on the inside. On Wednesday, when I met with the local pastors for our tech study and we discussed what we were preaching on, I told them boldly that I was preaching on Psalm 23. That is the reason that every piece of liturgy is centered on that text. Yet, I have not touched that text. I guess that the Holy Spirit had a different view as I wrote these words to speak to you. But I do want to share with you the words of Psalm 23 in a different light and give you an insight that I found and that I am hoping will speak to you where you are at today. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes to Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's hook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims 
friends with a blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. When I was at um, Glass Coffee House prepping for the sermon and thought that I was going to preach the whole sermon from Psalm 23, the line in this translation that jumped off the page were these 12 words. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. Now many of you probably memorized Psalm 23 in the King James Version. Thus you are more familiar with these words. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So once in a while, I love looking at the original language and trying to figure out why the translators chose the word or the sentence structure that they did. So let me give you a little history on the word. The word in verse 6 is radoff. The message translates it chase. The King James translates it follow. The best translation for the word is probably pursue. The chase may be more accurate, but here is the kicker. In my opinion, this word is surprising, very choice, because the word is usually used for enemies that are chasing down the psalmist with the intent to overtake and destroy. Then one more word, and I will wrap it up. I promise. Ach. Ach is the word that is translated as surely. The better translation would probably be only. So what does this mean for us? Only God is chasing you down. God's love and God's grace is pursuing you. No matter what you do or where you go, God will continue to pursue you. Thus, as you are on this journey of life, know that God is indeed with you on this journey. Amen. Our hymn of the day.
Let us pray for our community today. God, we thank you so much for everything that you have given us. At this time, we ask you to be with those we lift up in prayer. We ask you to be with Paul, Donovan, Vicki, Mimi, Janet, Deanne, and Chris, Kevin, and Kathy, Stephen, Dan, Sasha, Fred and Darlene, Sandy, David, Rusty, Shelby, Kayla, Rich, Marlene, Carl, Dan, Tisha, Jen, Dale, and the family and friends of work. Amen. Once again, I just want to pause and give a moment of thanks for each and every one of you who have given of your time, your talent, and treasures. Let us offer up our offering prayer. God of love, you abide with us. You provide for all of our needs and guide us in your ways. Out of gratitude for your care, we bring our gifts before you. Use them for your work of care, that all may feast at the table of abundance. Walk without fear and drink deeply from the cup of compassion. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all the people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please pause and consume your elements. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our sending psalm this morning, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Verses 1. Four.
final words of blessing. And the lush pastures of life, that hold beating places with love, may your feet know the way to find them. By the still waters of a running stream, may your hands shape a cup and drink deep from it. In the valleys of death's shadows that ever threats, may your sense of life find the way through. At the banqueting table set before your enemies, may your cup be full and overrunning. Like the anointing oil that runs down your head, may the blessing that is you spill into the world with eternal promise. And a way of a shepherd's staff warms off lameness from fear. May trust be your protective companion on the way. And through each day's living, as it unfolds, may goodness and mercy make their way into every home. And at the doorway to the house of the Lord of life, may you recognize your home and your hearth. And in the song that makes a dwelling place in your heart, may its music rise and its soul. Join me in the discussion. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah! Thanks be to God. Hallelujah! Thank you.